bakit makikipagpatayin at makis na true that China is being loved and sir actually we just have to work with them hindi nisa yung mga lupa our people kailangan ng importante kung ano maganda para sa kanila Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan. Narito tayo sa isa na namang pagtatanghal ng tapatan sa Aristokrat. Ang pag-uusapan ngayon ay tungkol sa relasyon na mamagitan sa Pilipinas at sa China ayon sa pananaw ng mga Pilipino. Uh, this is important because they say that uh, history is being charted by the people. So, ano ba ang nagaganap ngayon? While we've heard of a lot of statements from the governments of China and the Philippines, we'd like to find out how Filipinos look at the kind of relations that we have today. We're happy to have with us the best and the brightest who will share their views and opinions on what's going on between the Philippines and China. Uh, this is significant because seldom do you get uh, the best brains in the country in one table to discuss issues, but on the premise that we are all Filipinos. Yun ang ating premise. Doon tayo magsisimula. Nasa kaliwa ko po si General Victor Corpus, na dati pong uh, namuno sa Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, na Balita na rin, na batid na rin natin ang kanyang naging papel pag alis niya sa Philippine Military Academy. Kasama rin po natin si Dr. Butch Valdez. Siya po na may isang uh, political analyst at dating uh, undersecretary sa Department of Education. We're joined by a very young man, si Aaron Jed Rabena. Siya po ang program convener ng Asia Pacific Pathways to Progress Foundation at Associate Fellow ng Philippine Council for Foreign Relations. Siya po'y dating lecturer sa Asian Center sa University of the Philippines at siya po'y visiting fellow sa China Institute of International Studies, yung think tank na nasa Beijing, na nadalaw namin ni Mentong Laurel some time ago. We're also joined by uh, Secretary Roy Logoles, dati pong National Security Advisor at dati pong Mambabatas. Si Ambassador... Jose Apolinario Lozada Jr., isang dating ambassador at dating mambabatas at uh, isa ring malikot ang utak, mapanuri. Kasama rin natin ang isang mga ngalakal, si George C., na kasama rin sa isang grupo ng mga nagsusulong ng pagkakaibigan ng mga Pilipino at Chino. So let's start. Excuse me po. Ay, patented nga pala ni Mike Enriquez. Excuse me. <laughs> We'd like to uh, watch the short presentations of uh, the two sides today. So let's start with General Corpus, and then we'll have the presentation of Secretary Goles, and then let's start the ball rolling. So presentations, muna, simula natin kay General Corpus. I guess you would need a microphone. Oh, he line you na lang dito. No? Okay. You need a clicker. Okay. Okay. Sige pa. Okay. Okay. Let's begin. Good, mo good morning. Um, the title of my presentation is a win-win uh, approach in resolving uh, the maritime dispute with uh, China. Next. <clears throat> there are two basic uh, options uh, open for the Philippines. One is the win-lose strategy and the second is uh, 
a win-win strategy or approach. Okay. Let us uh, discuss first the win-lose strategy. This is a strategy where uh, the Philippines tries to win all while leaving the other party, which is China, at a total loss. Example of this is the uh, Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague ruling that China's nine dash line is not valid. That China has no sovereign rights whatsoever in Spratlys and other islands encompassed by the nine dash line. China reacted by declaring the uh, Permanent Court of Arbitration ruling as null and void and is prepared to go to war with anyone, including the United States, if China is evicted from the disputed islands by force. Uh, we'll remember that uh, the United States sent two uh, aircraft carriers before the uh, PCA ruling, together with uh, uh, strategic bombers and uh, nuclear submarines. But China told the United States that they, will, they are willing and prepared to go to war if uh, the United States will uh, force the issue. And uh, for the first time in history, the United States was forced to retreat. Okay. So a win-lose strategy will eventually lead us to war. If we want, if our uh, vision is to go to war with China, then we insist on uh, uh, the win-lose strategy. We insist on uh, enforce it, trying to enforce the PCA uh, Hague ruling, and that we will surely lead us to war. So a win-lose strategy will uh, eventually lead to war. And uh, the Philippines does not get a single drop of oil, nor a single drop or cubic feet of gas, nor a single piece of fish from the disputed area. And if war breaks out because of a win-lose approach, the United States and the United States use the five EDCA bases in uh, the Philippines as launching pads to attack China then uh, the Philippines will be reaping barrages of medium and intermediate range ballistic missiles raining on those EDCA bases, and they could be nuclear. So a win-lose strategy gives the Philippines a uh, temporary legal victory, like our victory in the Hague ruling. But eventually, this will lead the Philippines to strategic economic and geopolitical defeat in the long run. Now, what is a win-win strategy? This is the other option for us. A win-win strategy is one where the Philippines uh, sits down and dialogue with China with the aim of both parties coming out as winners. So, some of us may ask, uh, why are we going to dialogue with the giant? Diba, bubulihin lang tayo niyan? So, uh, small, small and weak uh, Philippines negotiating with the giant China can be the Philippines' strong hand and leverage to RP's advantage. Because uh, the whole world will be watching the unfolding drama, and giant China wouldn't want to be seen as a bully. For no small nation like the Philippines would, would dare dialogue with China ever again if China acts or is perceived as a big bully. So RP's smallness can be our secret weapon that can eventually melt and win over the dragon's heart. Next. So, how do we proceed 
with a win-win strategy. RP's claim of sovereignty is based on legality, which is the PCA uh, ruling in the RP's favor in 2016. China's claim of sovereignty, on the other hand, is based on history that China discovered and gave names to these the disputed islands way back in 1279, start of the Yuan Dynasty. And based on international law, the one who made the discovery and gave names to those islands is entitled to sovereignty. That is their argument. So, even if the uh, Philippines and China dialogue for a hundred or even a thousand years, may poem na, may lines a poem na sinasabing, but never the twain shall meet. So, the best way to proceed is for both sides to set aside the issue of sovereignty for the rest of the century. Renewable, if necessary, with both sides uh, agreeing that neither is surrendering its respective claim to sovereignty so that neither side loses face in front of their respective constituencies. Only then can, we, can a real win-win negotiation between uh, the Philippines and China begin. So what is a win for the Philippines? First is the joint exploration and exploitation of energy and other mineral resources in the disputed areas. Joint environmental conservation of marine resources in said area, including joint development and exploitation of fishery resources. Joint development of tourism. But the, the most important of all is that China, uh, during the negotiation, if we can convince China to agree to make the Philippines the easternmost terminal hub of the Belt and Road Initiative. That China assists the Philippines in the revival of the ancient manila acapulco Galleon trade route with possible high-speed rail through South and North America. Help develop Cagayan in uh, uh, CESA in Cagayan, Maricalum in Negros, and Bungao in Tawi-Tawi as maritime hub for, gateway, for gateways for Asian countries and China to the Pacific Ocean, serving as connectivity hubs to Oceania, North and South America. So right now, uh, we are the easternmost hub of the Maritime Silk Road. But if this can be uh, extended to the revival of the Manila Acapulco Galleon trade route, you will notice that we will be in the epicenter of a global economic development that will extend the um, Belt and Road Initiative to cover not only Asia, Europe, and Africa, but also cover North and South America and Oceania. Pero tayo ngayon ang pinaka epicenter of that development, planetary scale economic development. That, so that will be a big win for us. May kasabihan sa negotiation kasi na let us enlarge the pie. <laughs> yung paghahatian natin. So, this is one way of enlarging the pie where the Philippines will be a big winner. Now, hindi lang pwede ang, ang, ang tayo lang ang makinabang. Ano naman ang pakinabang ng uh, China rito? Oh, sige, next. Next, next, next. Let's go to the win for... Ano naman ang uh, win for China. China? Okay. This is very important dahil uh, hindi lang one way ang negotiation. Kinakailangan both parties will win. So, in order to know what is a win for China, we must know what is their core interest. 
Bakit uh, nagsagawa ng mga artificial islands ang China dyan sa South China Sea? Bakit sila interesado sa Scarborough Shoal? Okay? The reason, there are two basic reasons. Okay, next. Ito ang uh, mapa ng South China Sea. Okay. So, sa paningin ng China, uh, the uh, South China Sea can spell the survival of their nation and civilization. Sa tingin ng maraming mga geopolitical uh, analyst, itong mga barren na uh, rocks and shoal sa South China Sea, eh walang kabuluhan. Pero sa China, it means their very own survival. And they will fight for it. Yan ang bottom line. Okay, why will they fight for it? Because, can we get to the, uh, uh, ayan, ayan. Itong mapang ito, uh, ang South China Sea, merong isang malalim na portion. Isa lang. And that is the Manila Trench, west of uh, Metro Manila. That goes from uh, all, uh, Mindoro all the way to uh, uh, ta Taiwan. Okay. Yan, yan ang uh, isang uh, pwedeng daanan ng uh, nuclear submarines ng uh, Amerika to conduct a first strike against China. Kasi pag malapit na sila dun sa, sa eastern coast ng China, within minutes, they can wipe out the entire east coast of China. With four uh, Ohio-class submarines. Apat lang ang makapasok dyan. The whole of uh, China's, uh, the whole Chinese nation and civilization can be wiped out within minutes. Kasi it will only take minutes for those missiles, yung cruise missiles, na yung tinatawag nilang Tomahawk uh, cruise missiles, na ang isang submarino, yung Ohio-class submarines, carries 154 of these cruise missiles. Ang isa niyan, 10 times more powerful than the one used in Hiroshima. Ganyang kalakas yan. So, kahit ilang, uh, uh, apat lang na submarino ang makapasok dyan, it will mean the end of the Chinese civilization, the Chinese nation. Kaya makikipagpatayan ng China dyan. They will never allow those submarines to approach and conduct a first strike against China. Eh, dyan lang ang dadaanan sa Scarborough Shoal. Dyan lang sa Manila Trench natin. Okay, that is one. Pangalawa, bakit makikipagpatayan at makikigera ang China because of those islands? The purpose of uh, building those artificial islands is to prevent the United States for, for uh, conducting a naval blockade in the Malacca Strait, which uh, the United States and uh, Australia have been practicing for the past 12 years. And in the last two years, Japan and uh, New Zealand Sumama doon sa mga exercise na na yan. So, ito yung siguro si uh, dating Secretary Roy Golos, alam niya yung uh, Alfred Ma Thayer Mahan Doctrine. Dahil yan ang pinag-aaralan nila sa US Naval Academy. According to the Mahan Doctrine, to control the ocean, you control the choke points. Uh, ipakita natin yung, yung mapa Uh, uh, lower, lower. Yan. Okay. Yan ang mapa ng South China Sea. Makikita nyo dyan yung Malacca Strait. Yung uh, Sunda Strait. 
yung uh, Lombok Strait at saka Makassar Strait. Okay, yung mga strait na yan, yan ang dinadaanan ng uh, mga oil tankers at saka trade routes ng China to the Middle East, to Europe, and to Africa. Lahat ng langis nila dyan dumadaan, lahat ng trade nila dyan dumadaan. Okay. Pag yan ang uh, uh, hinarang ng U.S. Navy, the entire China's Chinese economy will grind to, to a halt. Okay. So, talagang makikipagpatayan ng China dyan. Mm -hmm. So, kung, uh, kung ipipilit natin na umalis sila dyan, <laughs> eh, gera, gera yan. It will mean gera. So, and we, we saw it when the PCA uh, ruling was handed down, nung nagpadala ng dalawang aircraft carrier ang US, sinabi ng China, lalabang kami. And napilitan umatras ang US. Okay. So, nakita na, so, ano yung win sa kanila? Simple lang. Status quo. Kung ano yung uh, mga islang uh, hawak nila, gawin nilang gusto nila dun. Kung ano yung hawak natin, gawin natin yung ating gusto. Ganun lang ang solusyon okay. dyan. Alright. Sa status quo. Yan ang win-win. So, ayan, another win for China is for Manila as, uh, to make Manila as maritime hub can revive the uh, Manila Acapulco Galleon trade route So, ang win sa China, kung uh, tutulungan tayong i-revive yung Manila Acapulco trade uh, route, is that, imbis na tatlong kontinente ang makocover ng uh, Belt and Road Initiative ng China, it will now con cover six continents, pati North and South America and Oceania. So, that is also, that will also be a big win for China, pero ang Pilipinas ang mga pinakamalaking winner because tayo ang magiging epicenter nitong planetary scale economic development. Okay. So, uh, I will end there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, General. For the information of our friends from the media, magkasama si General Corpus at si Secretary Goles. When the Secretary Goles was the National Security Advisor, Chief ng ESAP, si General Corpus, at senior ni Secretary Goles sa PMA, si General Corpus. But anyway, let's listen to the presentation. Matanda lang, okay? Let's listen to the presentation of our good friend, Secretary Goles, please. Let's focus our attention to the other side. So you heard uh, the presentation of uh, General Corpus. Let's listen to Secretary Goles. The microphone, please. Thank you, thank you. But very quickly now, no? On, uh, I just would like to make some very quick comments. I'll make some detailed comments later. Yung uh, Yuan Dynasty, 1279, was not a Chinese dynasty. It was a Mongolian dynasty. During that time, China was under Mongolia. Unfortunately, under a smaller country. So China cannot claim the uh, achievements of the Mongolian dynasty as theirs because they were a vassal of uh, Mongolia during that, that 1279. The other thing is that uh, there was no such thing as a two-carrier operation before the PCA, and even a few months after. It happened uh, later, much later, but way out of the South China Sea. It was uh, off, uh, off uh, Japan. Malayo sa South China Sea yun yung uh, tooth carrier uh, operation uh, that was an exercise one carrier came from the west coast to join the carrier of the seventh fleet so that's uh, that's a fact now uh, let me show my uh, <coughs> Uh, this is what I call the, uh, I think uh, some people will be very happy with this, the China invasion. And look at it, uh, all the flags of China. Noong una, ang worry lang natin, yung JMSU, 
yung mischief reef already acquired by uh, China in 1995, developed in 2000, then fully developed uh, later. Of course, the nine dust line, and then, then. And then uh, they uh, seized Scarborough Shoal, that is Scarborough Shoal, nung, uh, uh, Scarborough Shoal, nung, uh, here, no? Scarborough Shoal, 2012. But then of late, uh, we're seeing more coming in. Uh, there is the joint development uh, that was mentioned by uh, General Corpus. Uh, joint development, and I think they're eyeing Reed Bank. And according to a retired uh, Air Force General in his uh, command and uh, general staff uh, uh, college paper, uh, the South China Sea oil, including gas, would amount to about $26 trillion. That's not all in the Philippines, but the entire South China Sea, and probably about 10% of that would be in the Philippines. And then uh, we have uh, the naming of uh, Chinese names in Benham Rice, and then the China Marine Research uh, uh, that they conducted uh, very recently, but uh, we found out that even before, meron pala silang ginagawa na rin dyan, na hindi naging transparent, nalaman lang natin ng bandang huli na 2004 pa, nandiyan na sila sa Benham Rice. Ito, matagal na ito, Shabu from China. No less than Pidea mentioned uh, the bulk of the Shabu entering the Philippines comes from China. And I raised this when I was the National Security Advisor. In fact, uh, uh, President uh, Arab Strada at that time even sent a high-powered uh, PNP delegation to China to talk about uh, this and ask them to stop the Shabu trade. Pero wala nangyari dito, no? And then, ito, China Telecom. Ito ang unang in-announce, but of late, parang uh, the government is trying to show that there's some kind of a bidding uh, going on where India is participating. But the first mention was China Telecom. And uh, yung $375 billion loan package uh, for, ito yung in-announce for bridges, railways, but then the bigger one would be the $24 billion economic uh, package. And then meron pang Sulusi, joint uh, patrol. Inannounce ito ng gobyerno. And then yung training ng uh, Filipino soldiers in China. I'll take this up uh, later. Itong $24 billion uh, economic package, and then this, the... the uh, uh, 374 billion peso uh, loans for bridges. Last week, uh, in the Makati Business Club, Secretary Pernia disclosed na hindi pala ganun ka ganda yung terms because if you get loans from Japan, the term is 0.25% to 0.75% interest rate. But uh, the, Jap the Chinese, Chinese loan amounts to 2% to 3%, about eight times uh, more expensive. I'll, I'll uh, talk about this in detail uh, later. Sabi ni General Corpus, uh, China will help in environment. They should because uh, they, have been, they, they have been accused of uh, causing the quickest rate of permanent loss of coral reef in human history because of their massive uh, reclamation projects in the South China Sea. Uh, that was uh, stated by a very renowned uh, marine biologist, Professor John McManus. Uh, I quoted him, I found out later that he's really very famous. Now let me talk of uh, uh, Possessional General, no? Uh, you, uh, pinag-usapan niyo yung, uh, yung Manila Trends uh, and I cannot help but uh, comment, uh, I studied uh, submarine warfare, I studied Mahan, I studied uh, anti-submarine warfare, uh, sea power, etc., etc. Ito ang uh, South China Sea. 
Yung sinasabi ni General Corpus na iisa lang ang malalim dyan, Manila Trends, that's not exactly correct. Because there's another deep area. This is the so-called uh, South China Sea Basin. The average depth in the South China Sea is about 1,000, a little over 1,000 meters. Ito yung uh, description dyan, no? At about 1,000 meters. Yung South China Sea Basin has a depth of about uh, 4, 000, about 5,000 meters. But that is irrelevant in submarine warfare. Because you don't need to go deep. You cannot, in fact, you cannot go deep. General, suicide yan pag pumasok ang submarine sa malalim. Because a submarine, every Navy man knows this. A submarine that goes deeper than about 1,000 meters will collapse, will implode. Magku hindi niya kailang magtago sa malalim kasi hindi pwede magkukollapse yan. Mamamatay silang lahat dyan. It would be suicidal. Yung uh, sinasabi niyong Manila Trends, ito pa, ito. This came from uh, uh, material from the Military Analysis Network, no? Just to show you, yung sinasabi niyong modern uh, submarine, the, the most modern uh, and the most sturdy is the Sea Wolf. It can only go as far as about 1,000 meters, general. Pag pumasok sa lalim yun, mamamatay yan. And I'm surprised that uh, you, you, you know, if you, if you present this to, uh, to Navy people, uh, they'll, they'll find this a very strange uh, presentation that someone would say na makakapagtago sa Manila Trends yung mga submarine. Okay, they cannot. And they will not. They don't want to die. Ito yung mga, ito, ito, this is a material again. Uh, and you can see from there that uh, that's about 4,000 feet. About, uh, in fact, ang, uh, ang safe uh, depth of a submarine is about 490 meters. They would not go below 490 meters. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can in an emergency, but uh, to be safe, di sila bababa dyan, no? Yung Russia, meron silang uh, submarine, na, but they have different uh, uh, doctrines, different strategies. They can go as far as about maybe about a thousand meters, but not deeper than that. Now, you spoke of uh, China's population centers. The population centers of China, as you said, is in the East Coast, Eastern part of China, and it is far from the South China Sea. As you can see from uh, this map, ito yung ano, no? Ito ang population center ng China. This is, Shanghai is here, Beijing is here, and then maybe some uh, populated centers in the coastal area. And if a, in submarine doctrine, because, uh, by the way, hindi Tomahawk missile ang gagamitin nila, General. They will use the fleet ballistic, the ICBMs, launched from submarines. The Tomahawk is not a ballistic missile, it's a cruise missile. The correct term is ballistic. Ballistic, tataas mo na yan, then bababa. Takes only a few minutes. And a submarine would not want to be caught inside the South China Sea, General. Why? Because that is restricted waters. <coughs> they will be trapped there. They want to go as far away as possible, just like a one with a sniper rifle. Y y now, that is in your area. You're an army general. When you have a sniper rifle, you don't go close to the target. You go as far as maybe about a kilometer away. Uh, if you have a Barrett uh, rifle, Para malayo ka. So that they will not detect you and then you can run afterwards. You don't go close like a hundred meters because if you do that, that's suicide. A submarine, a ballistic submarine, a fleet ballistic submarine carrying ICBMs would position themselves outside Pacific Ocean, the Western Pacific, because the range of their ballistic missile is 4,000 miles. And there's a reason for that because they want to be far. So hindi sila papasok in general. It would be crazy for a submarine commander to go inside the South China Sea. Believe me, as sure as the sun will rise uh, tomorrow, they will not uh, do that. So you, you have to talk to an Annapolis graduate. Mm. 
Bata man yun, not an army general. Okay, okay. Teka mo na, tawag pa yung presentation niya, Melo. Yeah, I will listen, I'm listening. Okay, I thought you were gonna interrupt me. You know why why they would not want to be inside the South China Sea? Because China has a Y-8 maritime patrol plane that can detect them. Even kahit na makatago sila sa thermocline, meron silang magnetic anomaly detector. Ito, ito yung buntot ng... Yeah, the tail of uh, it's like it's their version of P3, P3 Orion. Ito. Yan ang ano dyan, no? So, madidetect yung presence nila dyan. So, they would not want to be there. They would rather be here because they will be protected in the Western Pacific of Japan near Guam because they will be protected by the U.S. Navy and The plane of China will not dare go there also because they, it would be suicide for China to go to the Western Pacific area because that is controlled by the Seventh Fleet. Now on Scarborough Shoal, what is the strategic significance of Scarborough Shoal? And that's another point. Uh, you, you talked of uh, uh, interdiction, ibabalik ko rito, no? Uh, yung Malacca Strait. Uh, Malacca Strait, You, you blockade Malacca Strait, not inside the South China Sea. Again, it would be suicide to do that. Uh, you blockade Malacca Strait by doing, being there in the Andamar, at the mouth of uh, the Malacca. South China Sea, uh, at the mouth of Malacca, or right in the Indian Ocean. Or you can do that uh, in tandem with uh, the Australian Navy, which is a two-ocean Navy. They have a base in Perth that's uh, facing the Indian Ocean, and in Sydney that's facing uh, the, the Pacific. And now there's an emerging uh, alliance, the quadrilateral alliance. In fact, uh, last month, the Navy heads of uh, Australia, of India, of Japan, and the USA met in New Delhi to talk about how to push back the uh, Chinese uh, Navy, the PLA Navy, uh, that is uh, getting uh, very aggressive. So you, you don't blockade inside, you blockade outside because you're talking of uh, blockading uh, China inside the South China Sea. Uh, again, in, in the Indian in Turo ni Mahan, ni Alfred Thayer Mahan. You blockade them in the so-called, uh, uh, Mahan uh, used the term uh, Sea Lines of Communication, SLOC. Ito ang Scarborough Shoal. Scarborough Shoal is part of their grand plan. In fact, in 1999, I delivered a speech even before the PCA and I said after looking at the, their movement in the South China Sea that their next target would be Scarborough Shoal. I delivered a speech in Congress. Nobody believed me. They said that I was uh, being an alarmist. 2012, they got it. And here's their master plan for uh, Scarborough Shoal. Uh, look at it. Uh, it's quite big, surrounded by rocks. The rocks are protruding even at uh, high tide uh, elevation and uh, they're planning to have a, uh, here, can you see that? Sa uh, bandang west side, a runway also, a three, thousand, a, a three kilometer runway. There's a natural, uh, you can see there's a natural, a natural uh, channel where destroyers can go in. They, that's navigable. And meron pang ibang ano rito, no? They have other buildings uh, all over. This big, the lagoon, uh, Melo, is about 150 square kilometers. It's almost as big as Quezon City because Quezon City is about 160 square kilometers. So you can imagine what they can do there. In the Second World War, Admiral Halsey parked his uh, carriers and battleships and destroyers in Uliti Atoll, similar to Scarborough Shoal, maybe about twice uh, bigger than Scarborough Shoal. So you can imagine what uh, they can do. And uh, the think tank uh, people, and I've attended some think tank uh, uh, sessions in, uh, here in Vietnam, in Japan, and they're one in saying that the master plan of uh, China is to establish a uh, Strategic triangle, ito. What is the strategic triangle? The first point of the strategic triangle 
is already existing that is the Paracels Woody Island ito I'll uh, make this bigger yan Woody Island the second point is almost complete ito yung uh, cluster of uh, artificial islands uh, started with Fiery Cross the, the major ones are Fiery Cross Subi and unfortunately inside our exclusive economic zone Mischief Reef and then the third would be Scarborough Shoal. And if they succeed in doing that, they will have full control of the South China Sea. That is the objective, to have full control of the South China Sea as their next step towards jumping out, not to, not to interdict submarines. Submarines will not go there. I would like to repeat, uh, General. Uh, I stake my reputation as an Annapolis graduate. A ballistic submarine would not go inside. They'd stay in the western pacific area of uh, Japan where they can have a bigger area kasi sana yan, parang sniper din you try to hide in as big area as possible in order to minimize the possibility of detection and counter attack so yan, yeah, nagano so now, China has a military base in uh, Mississippi Reef inside our exclusive uh, economic zone tapos Dadalian ko na itong China loans, no? Yung uh, parang lumalabas sa tulong sa atin, but at a, non, at a very onerous uh, rate, uh, and no less than Secretary Pernia disclosed this at the MBC and uh, Makati Business Club. And he was, I think, uh, interpolated by another former Secretary of uh, NEDA, uh, where he disclosed 2, 2 to 3%. What is the effect of 2 to 3%? For a hundred million dollar loan, and 24 billion uh, consists of several hundred million dollar loans, we are talking, uh, see, Boots knows this because it uh, comes from Carlos Valdez, no? You're talking of a difference of about 250,000 to 750,000 dollars per annum if uh, you compare it with the Japanese interest of only. 0.25 to 0.75 percent. So, napakalaking uh, difference na yan if we are talking already of, uh, of uh, billions. Uh, that is something. And I'd like to quote this uh, editorial from uh, uh, Meron Bang Philippine Star dito. Very nice editorial that they came out with when Prime Minister Li Keqiang, Premier Li Keqiang of China, visited uh, the Philippines uh, after the ASEAN meeting and called on Malacanang, he was given a state uh, reception there. According to, to the editorial, no amount of soft loans, assistance and trade deals dispensed by Beijing can match the value of the areas officially awarded to the Philippines, as well as the rest of the deceived waters where China's claim has been invalidated. Our claim has been validated. It is international law already. Lawyers know this. It is already international law because a judgment by an arbitral tribunal is considered part of uh, international law. So if you violate that, you are violating international law. You are not respecting international law. So I'd like to end at that point and I'd like to apologize to, to General uh, uh, Corpus. You can lecture me on army matters, sir on uh, guerrilla warfare but uh, please uh, when it comes to navy matters makinig kayo ng konti sa akin okay uh, i would like to re react to that no yung uh, sinabi ni uh, uh, congressman goles na hindi pwedeng uh, gamitin yung submarine as first strike sa loob ng uh, south china sea kinakailangan na galing sa Guam. Because kung uh, mag-first strike ang US na galing sa, sa Guam yung kanilang submarine, China will have enough time to react na bago dumating yung, uh, yung mga missiles sa China, mauuna pa yung, yung missiles ng China with the uh, hypersonic glide vehicles, warheads, na umabot sa US. They can immediately counter-strike. 
Kaya, ang first strike, ang pinaka-ideal na daanan from Subic, lalabas lang sila sa Scarborough Shoal, nandoon doon na yung uh, Manila Trench. Hindi sila kailangan, yung sinasabi ni uh, Roy, na kinakailangan na more than 1,000 meters. Hindi kinakailangan, basta hindi lang sila ma-detect yung approach. Na makikita nyo yung uh, Manila Trench, tuloy-tuloy doon sa uh, near uh, the east coast, yung middle ng east coast ng China. Mm -hmm. Na from there, they can cover the entire uh, the entire east coast of China where 1.4 billion of their uh, population is concentrated. And yung industrial base nila nandun sa east coast. Now within minutes, yung buong Chinese nation and civilization will be will be uh, terminated okay. within minutes mm -hmm. na wala ka ng time na mag-react kasi kung uh, kung titira ka from Guam mauuna mauuna pa yung China na tirahin yung buong Amerika okay sagutin ko lang sandali sige pa sige pa okay. Okay. Sikit, uh, we will shift to another aspect ang target general is East Coast you can see from the map it's closer sa Japan than in the South China look, look it's obvious look at it Mm -hmm. Look at the east coast. The east coast of uh, China is close. Kung gusto mong uh, maggagamit, isasabi nyo, gagamit ng ballistic uh, missile, mas malapit sa Japan. You look at uh, Japan and uh, the east coast of China. Mas okay. malayo ang uh, South China Sea. The, the map is so self-evident, General. Look at it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is... Uh, pero pero yung, hindi, hindi glide, submarine. Yung sinasabi yung hypersonic glide. Ka, uh, kasi yung mga... Yung oh, mga theoretical, yung, let me finish. Theoretical pa yun. Wala pang ganung missile. Pinag-aaralan pa lang yung glide na yun. That is only in this study. Sa, 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 sa US, pinag-aaralan pa lang nila. Pero sa, pa lang. pero sa China, ginagamit na nila. No, no, they're not. Uh, they're, they're no okay. okay. Anyway, ang, ang uh, ballistic uh, missile can arrive in just a few minutes. And by the way, a ballistic, a fleet ballistic uh, submarine is not a uh, first strike uh, weapon, it is a second strike, second strike weapon. Yun ang uh, deterrent by both, uh, by all powers, because it cannot be destroyed. Yung first strike, ballistic yan, they'll, they'll target uh, the location of the ICBM silos all over para to neutralize them. But the deterrent is the fleet ballistic uh, submarines that are hiding so they can do a second a counter strike that okay. is the doctrine in uh, nuclear warfare okay uh, general believe me yun ang doctrine sige pa oh. okay kasi yung siya sabi yung kasi you know i i read your uh, before you you mentioned the manila trench as a hiding place you don't need 5000 meters to hide because if a submarine hides in 5000 meters Mamamatay yung sabay. Kasi yun ang, yun ang uh, reason mo nung Okay. Okay. Uh, let's shift from the military side of it. Yung economics. Because sabi nila, yun daw ekonomiya, pag nahawakan mo, hindi mo na kailangan makipagdigmaan. So, may bilanggit si Secretary Pernia uh, sa harap ng Makati Business Club. And uh, in a previous briefing with uh, FOCAP and other members of the media, I asked him, what about the interest rates from... Japan and China. Yun din ang sinabi niya. Yes, George, you're, you're a businessman. How do you look at it? I, I think that uh, it's, it's very clear, no? Japanese interest rates are much lower. However, the cost is much higher. Any business person look, knows you look at more than one criteria. So, uh, so the Japanese uh, rails are almost twice as expensive. Two to three times as expensive. You just examine it. But China doesn't complain because it believes in business for everybody. But the U.S. and Japan keep complaining about China. If that is the case, why are the bidded rails around the world, in U.K., in Thailand, elsewhere, uh, all won by the Chinese? Except, in fact, it's also won in the U.S., except that for political reasons, the U.S. decided not to do it through China. So there are many issues. We, we don't have to fight each other. The same way that we say that uh, uh, China is technically at war with South Korea, with Taiwan, with Japan, but they have very robust relations, and you don't keep on focusing on the negative things. We have to think of 
what the Filipinos need. What we need is not more water or islands. Of course, it's important, but we need our people to rise out of poverty. And how we use this money is very important. It's not just the interest rate. No, it's the other thing. If you go to the uh, World Bank or IMF, no, they have so many conditions. They want to control your whole financial system and your whole political system. China has no such uh, requirements. But also, we know the plus and minus. The minus is we might make the wrong decision as well. Filipinos have to take care of themselves. It's not for China or for US. It has to be for the... Or probably we can uh, be involved in building white elephants. Yes. That is the problem. Yes. But this is true because uh, I want to say that uh, in the, this underscores and Forbes magazine, the local papers have kept writing that China is going to do this. But historically, it's only the IMF and World Bank that has charged 16 to 20 percent. They have tried to foreclose on South America, on the Middle East, on the Philippines itself. They are accusing others of things that they themselves only have done. Not only once, but several times. When they had the chance to take over the Philippines, they took over all the mineral mining companies and all the utilities. China in 1,500 years never did that. They always traded. They heard about the mountain of gold. We can hear it, uh, read it in the uh, Chinese uh, annals. They heard about the mountain of gold and they came and they traded. Mm -hmm. They did not try to conquer. Whereas the U.S. killed all the Indians, 90% of them, to take over the land. Took over Mexico to have Texas, California, and so on. Took over Hawaii when the Hawaiian queen would not agree with them. Okay. And invented the pretext for war in, uh, in Vietnam. And we're not saying this is not the average American. The average American is a great person. I studied in America. We like the lifestyle. We don't want to be ruled by the Chinese. But we have to stop trying to foment a one-sided view. The only way to make intelligent decision is to be real and find out what's real. All right. In terms of diplomacy, where are we headed? Because, you know, sabi nga nila, di ba li magsigawan tayo sa negosasyon ng mga diplomats? Pero we have to say it in a nice way. Uh, talo ba tayo sa negosasyon? Ano po ba? Uh, I think that uh, in diplomacy, we believe that uh, the first line of defense is diplomacy. Here, I think that we should just really put our acts together. Put it in one piece that could really match the minds and um, diplomatic uh, style of the Chinese. The problem is not in China. The problem is in the Philippines. Why? Because we have not really identified our priorities. <coughs> right here, okay, these are the data that we present today but from our military and business people. These are the data that we need, but if we cannot even agree on this data, how can our diplomats um, present to the Chinese the best possible solution to the problems that we have between the Philippines and China? But they say diplomacy is something that you have to think twice uh, to say nothing. No, you can always ask them, uh, like what George said, that economics is the most important. I tend to agree on that, but even that, uh, military and intelligence is also very important. But the most important thing is for the Philippines to really define the road where it is going in its relations with China. We are not going to fight China, but we are not going to surrender as well. The most important thing is we should see to it that the Chinese would respect our own uh, thoughts, our own beliefs. And then we can ask them, if we are not going to agree, then we can ask the Chinese to agree to disagree at the same time, just like what George was giving us an example, Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, other South Korea have very aggressive uh, um, uh, relations with uh, China, mm -hmm. but they are also standing on their own two feet to defend their own sovereignty. Okay. Whatever. I think yes. that we should also follow that. The problem with us is we have so many data here, left and right, but we have no specific data which we can depend in presenting to the Chinese when we face them on the table. So our diplomats, our negotiators should really be top nuts, knows all of this, and all of this should really be coming from our businessmen, from our military people, so that we can present them and find out the best solution where we can really proceed forward. We're not going to war here. We're going to, as I agree with... Uh, General, General Corpus, Corpus, yeah. On a win-win situation for the Chinese and for the Filipinos. But more especially, the most important focus that we have here is our people should be able to live according to what we are, uh, the programs and actions that we are preparing okay. relating ourselves with other countries. Very well. Butch, your reactions, please. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what uh, uh, 
Congressman, Congressman Losada, June Losada has been saying. Um, it is a fact that uh, for the past how many decades we have not had the luxury of uh, asserting our sovereignty. We have not had the luxury of defining a foreign policy. No. We have always had to depend on what Big Brother was going to tell us. No. And then that is where we go. As a matter of fact, uh, in just the recent decade, no, uh, before, before President Duterte, our country is not even asked and invited to certain fora, conferences, no, when uh, joint economic uh, um, uh, proposals uh, for joint economic development are being made no, by, by in Russia, in Vladivostok, in, in the Netherlands, in, in, in wherever. No. They don't even invite us. No. Why? Because they know that our foreign policy, uh, both and our economic policy is tied up to it, no. is dependent on what our big brother is supposed to tell us. Now recently, however, by force of circumstances, by, by whatever phenomenon you want to describe it, and in very colorful terms, we have asserted our sovereignty, our independence. And this, to my mind, has uh, uh, gotten the Filipino people completely supportive of what our president had done. Mm -hmm. Whether he knew the impact of what he was saying at the time, uh, to me, is beside the point. The fact is, the result of that assertion of independence uh, opened up certain possibilities for the country. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, another thing that we have to, not just for the country, but for the whole region. <laughs> These things that are happening uh, in the Korean Peninsula, are a result of that initial move that the Philippines had made when we asserted their sovereignty. The change in the position of Japan from uh, already uh, agreeing that they should change their, their constitution from being a uh, use of the, uh, weapons for defense and uh, converting it to offense you know, had changed. Uh, it's no lo they're not lo going, going to push that change in their constitution. You know. Why the, 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 uh, that the, the, the assertion of the President Duterte that we are a sovereign and independent country, no longer a colony, had something to do with that? Mm -hmm. did, the, did the focus of the, the uh, um, Asia pivot, the 60% of U.S. naval forces moving in the Southeast Asian region, change when the Philippines uh, decided to postpone and continue the EDCA. Mm -hmm. Did the focus of, of that military uh, strategic move change? We don't exactly know, and I'm not willing to debate it at this point, but def definitely, parang nabalasa yung sitwasyon. And it is an opportune time for us you know, to look at it, not just in from a Philippines to versus China uh, thing, but look at it from the standpoint of what did the president do to uh, pull back the rest of the world, at least this part of the world, from war? Because he did something. He did something that changed the situation. It was not too long ago that we were already, like it was a fait accompli, that North Korea was going to be attacked by, by the United States or vice versa. It was not too long ago that since we were already preparing and the Asia P what was already mobilizing in our parts of the waters, in our territorial waters, using the Filipino Philippines like an outpost, like a military outpost, pointing missiles from warships, from submarines towards China. It was not too long ago that now the situation had changed. Okay. And so it is to our favor. It is not just to our favor, it's to the favor of all the peoples in the region. You see? Okay. This is, this is the important thing that we must consider. This, um, this uh, uh, 
what China Sea uh, disputes and so on and so forth. Let's face it. Uh, let's describe the elephant in the room and tell them that it is they that are involved in this okay. through us. No. Yes. Uh, Secretary Goles, before we get to listen to Dr. Rabena, yes, please. Your initial reactions. Thank you. Medyo outnumbered kami, kaya kailangan give us a... Round robin, medyo accelerate on our, on our side. No? <laughs> yeah, Filipino, pero... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yes. Uh, alam naman natin where we're coming from. Uh, let's be frank about it. Uh, yes, yes no? Secretary. Huwag na tayo maglukuhan dito. Yes, I know. Okay. Huwag na tayo nga maglukuhan. Okay. Talking of uh, the loans, uh, now everybody's talking about China's debt trap. Uh, sabi ni George, uh, wala rong... Uh, well, maybe he has not heard of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka borrowed about 1.5 billion dollars, maybe 1.4 billion. Hindi sila makabayad because it turned out to be the port, that's the airport, turned out to be a white elephant, no revenue. So what did China do? Uh, the loan, 70% of the loan was converted into equity. So now, China controls uh, this port in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, it's a good thing that Japan is uh, competing as far as economic packages are concerned. So it's not only China that is extending. There's an alternative. There's a uh, accounting of how much Japan is extending compared with uh, China. And so far, Japan is ahead $230 billion uh, to Southeast Asian countries compared to $155 billion uh, from China. So major ahead pa ang uh, Japan. Now, talking of uh, sovereignty, I don't know, uh, we set aside the, the best way to show that we have sovereignty is to have to assert the ruling of uh, the arbitral tribunal because that was in our favor. That was, that's what sovereignty is all about. That's what sovereign rights are all about. But uh, we have set it aside. Why? Uh, maybe because of the economic uh, package, but then as I mentioned earlier, is this, uh, uh, is this comparable uh, to the value of uh, our exclusive economic zone to the west of the Philippines? The West Philippine Sea is about 800,000 square kilometers. Is it worth only $24 billion? Is it uh, worth less than uh, the railways uh, and the other projects? And by the way, I have a question. Of the $24 billion package that has been promised, so far, wala pang nakikita dyan eh. Wala pa. Ma wala pang dumarating. Wala pa. October 2016 yan. Uh, malapit na mag two years. So far, wala pang nakikita yan. No? Now, uh, I'd, I'd like to jump, speaking of sovereignty. I agree. Uh, for the Philippines to so summon our, the U.S. ambassador, uh, to Malacanang for clarification on the Intel report because that is uh, supportive of the dignity of the head of state because they address the head of state. But at the same time, the government should also summon the Chinese ambassador because of the militarization of uh, Mr. Reap, uh, which uh, to my mind uh, addresses the dignity and security of the state, not just the head of state but the state itself, and that to me is uh, quite uh, important. Yung Philippines would be dragged into U.S. wars. I think it's the other way around, because remember, it is China that is aggressive. It is the aggressor. It is the one uh, that has a dispute with Tibet, with, uh, with India, with Japan, with the Philippines, with uh, Vietnam, and so many other, I think about 18 countries. So if we, we might be the one that might be dragged into a war if we side too much with uh, China because they have militarized uh, these artificial islands, Fiery Cross, Mississippi, and Subi. And uh, Mississippi is right inside our exclusive economic zone. Mm -hmm. And we cannot just say that this is just superpower conflict <coughs> because a big part of that is our EEC. It okay. is our duty to protect our 
exclusive economic zone because the Constitution is very clear. Article 12, Section 2 of the Philippine Constitution states, and I'd like to quote, the state shall protect the nation's marine wealth in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, and reserve its use and enjoyment exclusively to Filipino citizens. Okay. So, ano, pabimigay na lang natin yung exclusive economic zone natin. <laughs> In case of uh, conflict, uh, where, where, do we, where do we stand? Uh, can, we, can we depend on uh, the assurance of, of uh, China? I'm reminded of the story of the scorpion and the frog. You know what happened? Mm -hmm. The scorpion uh, said, don't worry, Mr. Frog, I'm your friend. Help me cross the river. Don't worry, Philippines, uh, we're friends. Uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, cross uh, all these obstacles. But uh, in the middle of the river, the scorpion stung the frog. And the frog asked, uh, as he was dying, why did you do that? And the scorpion said, because that is my nature. And that is the nature of China, to grab uh, territory. Uh -huh. Ask Tibet. Ask uh -huh. what they did to uh, our islands, uh, the South China Sea. Sino bang, ano, sino bang uh, inagawa nila? Okay. Oh, you kaya yun nga, yun ang ano, tapos. And uh, look at this, uh, look at this uh, uh, clustering. Where do we want to belong? Uh, here's a cluster of non-democracies and uh, democracies. Uh, where do we belong? What, what are we as a country, as a society? All right. Uh, ano ba tayo? Uh, sa China ba tayo? Do we want to be with North Korea, with China? Or do we want to be with uh, the US, Japan, India, okay. uh, UK, New Zealand, uh, yes, Secretary. Uh, France? All of these are already having alliances and they're starting to push back. Uh, where do you want to stand? Uh, All right. Well, if I, I don't, I, I can understand if some people are more comfortable with China. Uh, so, kanya kanya ganon eh. Okay. If, if if you're happy to be with China, well, good. By the way, if we are in China today, we cannot have this forum. By the way, we'll be arrested immediately. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's hear from uh, well, CIIS. No, you used to be a visiting fellow at the China Institute of International Studies, well, uh, Dr. Lebena. <laughs> How do they think tanks in China look at the Philippines? Also, right now, they, they, um, they view our foreign policy as uh, something that's, well, independent. Because to them, we have long been um, very supportive of the uh, American foreign policy. But mm -hmm. if I may just uh, say something, sir. Um, I think, sir, it's, it's not a matter of being pro-China, pro-US, anti-China, or anti-US. We simply have to be uh, pro-Filipino. And I think, sir, um, I'm, need, I'm neither a Navy man, sir, <laughs> nor an Army man. But um, in f when it comes to foreign policy, I mean, generally, Henry Kissinger, sir, and Sun Tzu said that, I mean, diplomacy is the art of restraining power. And I can see that right now, sir, with what the president is doing. Although I cannot fully commend it because there are also some wrong things that he's been doing. <laughs> but uh, to me, sir, I think we would be a better and a strategic player in the region if we would take into account all these dimensions, economic, strategic, diplomacy, everything. Mm -hmm. And it would show that we are not emotional about things, but we are seeing the bigger picture. Because to me, sir, the president says that he wants an independent foreign policy. That is also what our constitution says. So where does the difference lie, sir? I think it lies in the application, sir. In the practice, it is easier said than practiced. But to me, uh, I think to it, for it to really be independent, it also must be a balanced foreign policy. As I said, sir, it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. Now China is my new love, goodbye U.S., or, and then hello U.S., I don't like China anymore. I don't think it has to be that, sir. So I think we have to look at the models in the region, sir. We look at Vietnam, we look at Malaysia. Vietnam... Its largest trading partner, uh, Sir Melo, is China. But at the same time, they continue to modernize their military, fortify their foothold in the Spratlys. The Malaysians, they are the Chinese number one partner in ASEAN. At the same time, they buy submarines from Russia, aircraft from Russia, even from China. At the same time, they strengthen also their foothold in the Spratlys. 
So what is it that we are doing and we are not doing? So I think, sir, we are right in engaging China, but what's happening to our soldiers in Ayungin, in Kalayaan? Years and decades of neglect, sir. So we have to address that. And I would say, sir, if I may uh, also follow up, the Japanese themselves and the Americans, their think tanks, or what we call the track to diplomacy, they also talk to the Chinese. They invite Chinese scholars, the Japanese do the same. And even Shinzo Abe, sir, he sent the head of the LDP to Beijing to send a letter from Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe that we want also to have a stable region, something like that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, we, we, so I don't think because of their strategies, you know, the Americans, the Vietnamese, the Malaysians, they are any less patriotic than we are. So I think, sir, in international relations, in international politics, we have to go beyond the legalistic stance. We also have to take into account other factors. I mean, we, we, we engage, we do all simultaneously. Okay. Because, um, I mean, uh, we, we keep on complaining that China is doing this and doing that. But what is it really that we are doing on the ground to safeguard our claims? Okay. Or what are we doing at sea to, you know, really verify if there are some incursions indeed? So I think, um, well, uh, I guess it's, uh, there, there's a scholar who said that there is uh, a cautious optimism or guarded optimism. Okay, very So well. we have to be strategic, sir. Yeah. Very nice. We'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media who may have questions. We'd like to acknowledge members of the foreign and local media. Uh, Melo, Melo. Support yes. ko lang yung ano niya. Uh, please, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rabena's uh, statement on Vietnam. That's a very good point. In fact, that has been... Uh, uh, one of the points I keep on raising, that we must follow the example of Vietnam. When the president uh, visited Vietnam, even before he went to China, I was so encouraged. Sabi ko, nako, may matututuhan sa mga Vietnamese. Because if you look at the history of Vietnam, it's almost a thousand-year history of Vietnam confronting their giant uh, neighbor. Uh, wars, uh, conflict. In 1979, they had a land war. Uh, China, I think, uh, learned a lesson there because the regulars uh, were met by Chinese, by Vietnamese militia only, and they lost. The Chinese lost uh, 20,000 soldiers, reportedly. The China invaded and grabbed the Paracels in 1974, 1975, when Vietnam was already on the verge of. Uh, losing uh, of uh, the South Vietnam, because South Vietnam was the one controlling the parasol at that time. And then uh, in 1988, they had a uh, naval encounter in the Johnson South Reef. Uh, it was an uneven uh, fight because it were, there were three frigates, armed frigates, against uh, Vietnam's transport ships, and the Vietnamese were massacred. In uh, 2014, China attempted to position an oil rig inside the exclusive economic zone of Vietnam, but Vietnam resisted with their coast guard, with their fishing boats. Uh, there was a physical uh, confrontation. There were even riots uh, inside uh, Vietnam. Vietnam stood their ground, and after three months, uh, China withdrew. But uh, in spite of all these uh, confrontations, they continue with their diplomatic engagement. They exchange uh, heads of states, uh, prime ministers, etc., etc. And as uh, correctly uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Rabena, Vietnam continued their uh, uh, development of their defense capability. They acquired the Sukhoi 30, about 40 of them, from Russia. They have already earlier Sukhoi 22, about 35 of them. They acquired six kilo-class submarines mm -hmm. to the tune of $3.8 million from uh, Russia. They have about 400 S-300 uh, uh, surface-to-air missiles. Uh, all of them uh, aimed at uh, a, a possible incursion by Chinese uh, planes. They bought uh, five uh, Gepard-class uh, uh, frigates from Russia. So they, they, they have this, they have that uh, capability, and now they're talking to India for the possibility of buying uh, some Brahmos uh, missiles, uh, okay. considered the best uh, uh, missile uh, right now. So okay. the Vietnam, to me, is a very good example. And is uh, Vietnam suffering economically because they're investing a lot on defense? No. Their growth rate is 7.6%, higher 
higher than our growth rate. Their uh, GDP is increasing. It's only about a little over 200 billion, but uh, growing because their budget, their uh, export is bigger than our export. Okay. Look at their uh, airport. Their airport is maybe 10 times b better than our airport. Of course. They have an 8.5 kilometer bridge, very modern, from uh, the near the airport uh, to the city. And they have a very modern north-south highway. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this funded by Japan, incidentally. All right. Thank you very much for raising those points. Uh, yes, from a businessman's point of view, before we open the floor to our colleagues from the media, please. Thank you so much for this chance. Uh, I, I would like to present myself not as a businessman in this regard, but more as a historian. No? Go ahead. The institutes, no? So if we're talking about scorpions, I think we should study who is the scorpion. No? <laughs> because if you look at the U.S., U.S. have more than 800 military bases around the world and more than 1,500 military installations around the world. It's policy is to be the sole superpower while whereas the, the rest international of the world police is looking at a multipolarity no uh, it has it's considered uh, preemptive strikes as a mode of uh, foreign policy whereas china and U uh, china and russia say they don't do preemptive strike and they will not use nuclear weapons and the us is now saying that they are willing to use nuclear weapons on preemptive strikes even when the us is not threatened it uh, projects it's uh, around the world more than one half of its discretionary budget, six, seven hundred billion dollars, their discretionary budget is about 1.1, 1.2 trillion. Seven hundred billion dollars each year is used in military. That is more than the next eight countries combined. And yet they accuse China of being militaristic. Last year they spent 15 billion dollars on one warship, five billion dollars on one submarine, and they spent one and a half trillion dollars uh, building the F-35. So whose country makes money from war. They sold $350 billion in arms to Saudi Arabia alone, knowing that Saudi Arabia does not have a war inside its borders. Where is this arms going? So if we're talking about scorpions, we should, so we are not talking, uh, uh, the US, if we're talking about those uh, flags, uh, we should look at where they voted. Recently, not just last month, Nikki Haley of the US threatened the whole United Nations that if they did not vote with them, they will withdraw financial support. And they're accusing China of withdrawing financial support. They, more, 208 countries voted against the US, declaring that Palestine, unilaterally they declared Jerusalem belongs to Israel. Okay. They, betrayed, they betrayed the Palestinians. They betrayed the Filipinos in the Filipino-American war after saying they will help us, they took us over. They're, they're uh, refusing to recognize the meeting between North and South Korea. So we're talking about, you know, who is the scorpion, but that's not our objective to call names. Now, we look, look at uh, territorial disputes. Yes, there are disputes, but notably, if you will note, 16 out of 23 disputes have been settled by China without war, discussing through decades. Whereas in the case of the U.S., more than two-thirds of all the wars in the last few decades were started specifically by the U.S. And every country it invaded and took over has collapsed politically and economically <coughs> and has more casualties than ever before. They said they're trying to protect the ir Iraqis from, uh, from the human rights violations wherein Saddam killed three, four hundred people a year. At one time there was a supposed massacre of 70,000, but now half a million civilians have been killed already in Iraq and there's no prospect for peace. Okay. No? So there are all these, and uh, we look at the multipolar world, and it's very different now. And Philippines has to take advantage of this wave of uh, cheap financing because the world is awash with cash. The opportunities are close to us. The opportunities are right here. Uh, Alibaba, the big, two of the five biggest companies in the world are Chinese, Alibaba and WeChat. Alibaba's biggest shareholder is Japanese Masayoshi Son and the U.S. Yahoo. Um, WeChat's biggest single shareholder is a South African media company that owns 30% of it. Now, what we want to say also, that the, even those investments here, the investments of China not bearing fruit has nothing to do with China. It has to do with Philippine processes of okay. approval, of standardization. And in fact, even the investments of the other countries have to do with China. Never has Japan given us even one billion dollars of aid in the last seven, eight years under the previous administration. This time, when China said they're going to invest, suddenly Japan offers 12 billion dollars, eight billion for, we're, say, we're not saying, let's accept help from everybody, let's not keep trying to foment war. Right now in the newspapers, every day we 
we see a PAP China, a PAP China. Uh, we don't expect them to work on uh, our framework because we have to understand that U.S. has betrayed every agreement it has made in the last couple of dozen years. In fact, in the last several dozen years. They told Iraq not to, to, to denuclearize. When they did, they went in and killed Saddam Hussein. Okay. They told Libya to denuclearize. They went in and attacked. China, when China <laughs> sided with the U.S. in the Second World War, after the war, after sacrificing tens of thousands of soldiers, the U.S. gave Dalian and the other countries, to, uh, other territories to Japan. Yaoyu Islands is called Yaoyu, which means fishing in Chinese. Very clearly, it has been shared. Let's yeah. not talk about the strategy. It's very critical. Yes, no? but, then, but then the U.S. was given the right to trust, uh, trust uh, held in trust, because they didn't want to give it to the communists. The, U the world gave them the right to hold it in trust, and the U.S. unilaterally gave it to Japan without any reason. Okay, uh, uh, very quickly. Short, uh, short reaction then, before uh, we I give it to our I respect your media. sense of history. Uh, you were furnished notes by another person, I believe. Uh, that's you. Wow, very good history. But my, my concern is our history. Who is the scorpion stealing 90% of the West Philippine Sea? That is the scorpion that I have in mind. Okay. Not the scorpions of the uh, background, I gave you ancient history. Yan yung, yung umagaw sa Mr. Free. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I let you. Nobody can believe okay. the US. Uh, I let you talk they for. Uh, Russia okay, okay. In All right. I'm, I'm talking of Philippine history. Easy. Sinong All umagaw right. ng West Philippine Sea? <laughs> Sino yung umagaw <laughs> ng Scarborough Shoal? <laughs> Sino ng kay claim ng. Uh, no? uh, okay. So, yun, yun ang, uh, yun scorpion. And then I'd like to ask Tibet also and the Uyghurs, who ah. are their scorpions? Tibet was an issue from right. 800 years ago. Ah. The U.S. Okay. took over Hawaii, okay. Mexico, okay. Okay. Vietnam. Uh, let's Tibet. entertain the questions. This Tibet time. was only in the 50s okay. Okay. When, you, when China okay. grabbed it. Uh, let's make way uh, for our Mayor. colleagues from the media. Mr. Mr. Please good identify good yourself. Good morning, everyone. Recto Mersen is uh, from Business Mirror, no? He's a foreign affairs reporter. Uh, yeah. Recently, Senior reporter. Recently, the United States through a private organization, threatened you know, to remove President Duterte from office. You know? And uh, I thought that regime change has been removed from the American mentality. Magbula nung pinatay nila si Ngotin Jim in Vietnam and uh, some other uh, leaders in South America. Pre precisely. So may I ask the gentleman here, uh, what should the Philippines do in, 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 in the face of these threats to remove our duly elected president. May I ask uh, Jun Lusada, Ambassador Jun Lusada, to answer this question. Uh, thank you very much, Recto. Um, I gave my piece when that happened. Of course, that was a very uncalled for. In diplomacy, that was uncalled for. And it is right for the Philippines to express its uh, discomfort in the statement. On the other hand, the statement was coming from a private organization. So when I was asked about it, I, thought, I said, we should really call the American ambassador to express our uh, sentiment on the issue uh, that was expressed by the American intelligence report. See, in diplomacy, we have three things. What is official, what is unofficial, and what is personal. In this case here, we cannot officially um, express our uh, views because this is coming from a private organization. But even if the uh, private organization is a pawn of the, the, the government of the United States, we still have to look at what is really on the ground. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy that our um, administration called the American president and verbally informed them of our uh, discomfort on the, the statement. It does not whatsoever uh, affect our relations with uh, other countries. Would you have a follow-up? Uh, well, I was also alarmed because the, some of my friends, and maybe you have read it in the social media, no, were encouraging the Americans to do it. In fact, they are calling it a work in progress to remove our president. And I, don't, I think I don't agree with that. If we have to remove the president, it should be done by the Filipinos and not any, any other country. Yeah, but that is also a fact that in the Philippines, uh, we have a very robust democracy and everybody talks about it or not. But what is important here is to stress that officially we express our uh, dissatisfaction. Um, and officially we uh, uh, condemn it. But officially also we cannot 
uh, give them a not verbal uh, because uh, have nothing to do with the expression of the American private American public against our own system. Okay, uh, Ambassador, could it be possible that there are some wise guys using some other groups as fronts to ventilate the opinion of uh, Capitol Hill? Well, of course, yes, that's true and that is a fact. Mm. But we have to work on the system where we have to believe in what is uh, there. And uh, the fact is this organization is being used by the American government. So what will the Philippines do? Uh, officially, we, uh, we call them, express our uh, dissatisfaction. But we should also do something. This is where all of our uh, speakers here should start really advising our foreign affairs people. How can we approach and solve this problem diplomatically if we ourselves do not know which uh, area we are going to concentrate on? First, I think the most important thing is we keep on talking about independent foreign policy when we are not really independent. I think the most important thing that we should really do here is an interdependent foreign policy where we protect the interests of the Filipino over everybody else. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, please. Tess Ramiro, uh, Catholic Media Network and Bloggers Association of the Philippines. I may be simplistic in my question, but really what behooves me right now is what are all these issues for that affect the Filipino, ordinary Filipino? We wouldn't care about the military struggles or the, all the things that have been presented, although we appreciate it very much. Uh, especially also with regards to the economic packages from Japan, from China, etc. But what behooves me right now is how is the ordinary Filipino affected by this? Their only concern is to get out of poverty. And the, what's closest to their heart right now is, huh? Shabu coming from China? Our president linking up uh, with the Chinese and not doing something about the Shabu? with Operation Tukhang and all that. These are what concerns the ordinary Filipino. And for me, concerning uh, with all these things, I appreciate very much no, the presentations because it's an eye-opener, but at the same time, it really behooves me how all these things will affect the ordinary okay, Filipino. Okay, so the question is, anong meron para sa karaniwan tao? Correct. Uh, can, I, can I answer since Shabu was uh, mentioned? Uh, that, that, that is very puzzling to me. The president has said that uh, he hates drugs. But how come he is not confronting China, which is the source of drugs? Th that to me is very puzzling. Uh, that's why if, if, uh, if uh, we want a truly independent uh, foreign policy, I think that should be addressed. Because China takes pride in controlling their society. So they can control the outports there. Uh, and I think if they control the source, instead of the, the thousands and thousands of uh, small uh, distributors, it's better to address the source, which is China. Now, the, the other thing is uh, there was a survey made uh, about a year ago by the SWS, uh, if I recall correctly. And according to the survey, 80% of the people would like uh, the government to assert our victory in the arbitral tribunal. So that is uh, very worrisome to them. And I can understand that because, uh, alam mo yung mga tao, territorial by nature eh. Agawan mo na malit na parte yung uh, yard nila, magkakagulo na kayo. So here, we are seeing uh, a bully uh, neighbor grabbing 90% of the West Philippine Sea. So to them, that is very emotional and that's very understandable from the point of view of Filipinos. And I think that is the reason also why China remains to be very unpopular. In fact, it's the most unpopular country, major country, as far as Filipinos are concerned, as shown by surveys again. Okay. In spite of uh, all these uh, uh, projects, uh, all this uh, uh, demonizing uh, of uh, the U.S. because of history, etc., etc., China remains to be the most unpopular major country as far as Filipinos are concerned. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I think Congressman. The majority of our people are confused on where are we really in the Philippine-China relations because the confusion stems from 
what we say <coughs> is not really in balance with what we do. So, gagawin mo to, sabihin mo, kaibigan natin yung in-check, yet we are fighting drugs and they are the source of our drug uh, problems. Uh, ayaw natin ng, ng America, but at the same time we are, uh, if you go to the survey, majority of our people say, okay, we will be with the United States of America. The most important thing to establish now is, in our relations with the Chinese and with other countries in the world, what is our gauge? Diba our simple gauge is the comfort and the uh, satisfaction of our people as, uh, as a nation. Um, and we have to live what is uh, economic to our economic uh, players, all, um, strategic to our intelligence players, but we have to stand firm on what is important for the welfare and for the integrity of the Filipino as a nation and as a people. Thank you. Yes, uh, which microphone? Oh, I just wanted to react to the lady's uh, question because it was an appropriate question. Uh, but uh, before I say that, I think, uh, I think there ought to be a law of, uh, to regulate all of this uh, these uh, survey companies. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that over decades, no, these survey companies have gone through coming up with their own, their own results of surveys, which is not investigated. Not, uh, so maybe these lawmakers should look into it and but they will look not. for a way. They will not. Yeah. But they will not. maybe, uh, maybe I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping against hope, right? Yeah, but there should be a law about certain things. Okay, no? okay. Uh, now, uh, going back to this, where does the Filipinos stand in this case? No? Uh, what I think the president is trying to do is precisely to address the, the, the uh, plight of the Filipino. No? I think. I'm not, I don't know him. I didn't even vote for him. But his direction is towards that. Now, you cannot... You cannot... Uh, uh, as, uh, address the condition of Philippine poverty without infrastructure, without economic development based on infrastructure. Now, uh, he needs infrastructure. He had to go to countries that were willing to help us on this. And the only country that was willing to help us on this, well, the two countries that were willing to help, now three, was China, Japan, and Russia. The United States was not very willing to help us in infrastructure. Uh, the loans that are being criticized uh, are actually out of, uh, maybe it's just to criticize, because uh, an a, uh, infrastructure loan you know, um, can be looked at from two standpoints. One is to look for the financial returns, you know, which means if I put up an infrastructure here, Will the taxes that I generate or the income I generate from that pay for it? If it does not pay for it, then I will not go through. That is the way the World Bank and the IMF were always looking at infrastructure. The other one is to look at it in economic returns. No? Economic returns does not immediately come up with the, the financials. No? But you can see the impact and the quality of life of the people around. No? if you prepare and come up with an infrastructure development program. Okay. Now, that is why this thing about uh, debt trap and all of that, that's a, that's a campaign. No? That's a campaign to not to go into this uh, long-term concessional loans between the Philippines and those countries that are able to do it. I say countries because it should be on a country-to-country -country basis. And those infrastructures that we're going to be put up must pay for itself in economic and financial terms. In other words, we should not raise the taxes just to pay for the infrastructure. Okay. The infrastructure, as you put it, must generate its own capability of paying. That's why it is long term. That's why it's given to us in 20 years, 30 years, even 40 years with a lot of um, uh, uh, moratorium. Mm -hmm. on, on payments. You give, they give you 10 years 
They give you 15 years, no payment, until you're able to put up the infrastructure. Now, I, it is lamentable, though, that even with the uh, economic program of the president, and I should not say it's the president, uh, it's his economic theme, uh, that they have not gone too much into this country-to-country -country arrangements. Instead, they have allowed private sector you know, to come in and go into a private sector-led growth instead of a government-led growth. Mm -hmm. If it's private sector-led, that means private sector and private sector go into an arrangement. They look for a financier, and the financier of that project, well, even if it's infrastructure, is going to be guaranteed by the Philippine government. That is very dangerous because it's going to be high cost. And for infrastructure, it is very dangerous. Okay. So, so these types of things must be addressed. The lady said, what is it there? For the Philippine if people. If we do not have conflicts, if we are able to, instead of, of uh, muscle to muscle, instead of calling on the United States to protect us from their enemy, the Chinese, uh, instead of us being used as pawns, we should go into infrastructure development programs for our people. Uh, and there, move towards gaining independence, asserting and being able to stand up for it if you have a healthy uh, economy. Okay. And then you can assert your sovereignty even more. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Rabena. So if I may just mention po, um, like signs where we can see the, the so-called independent foreign policy of the president is working and where it is lacking. So it is working when, you, if you would notice, when the president mentioned that he no longer wants military assets from the U.S. because they're all hand-me-downs. Sometime thereafter, I mean, sir, you would notice na a few weeks after that, puro brand new na po yung pinagbibigay ng the Americans. And it doesn't end there, sir, because the Chinese also gave um, some assets, um, firearms, and not just the Chinese, but also the Russians. So what we have here, sir, all these countries uh, giving us uh, arms and weapons, and the Americans started to give brand news. And the way it seems to be lacking, sir, I think this is where I think the, the president can improve on, is his statements of inclination. Kung baga parang may mga preferential uh, statements po siya. Mm -hmm. So if he says this, this, this something towards China, might as well <laughs> say the same thing towards Japan and the US. But then, if he does that, his credibility would be diminished. Sasabi po nila, nang bubola lang. So okay. he could be, sir, if I may just finish, he, he could be, ano na lang po, sir, I mean, quiet all throughout. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just like what other countries are doing, they don't really say their policy, but they just do their policy. Being a scholar that you are, how would you distinguish whether the statement of the president is serious or was if he's just joking? <laughs> well, sir, we can look at the context and uh, knowing the president, sir. I mean, I mean, he's he's he loves to inject humor into his uh, sir. And that is the problem <laughs> because whatever he says, that's policy. Yes, secretary. <laughs> well, going back to the survey, not question the survey, Kanina, but remember. The same uh, survey companies uh, rank uh, gave the president 80% rating and nobody's questioning that. So there, there's a survey. China ranks lowest according to Pulse Asia, unless you're questioning the 80% uh, rating of the president uh, given by Pulse Asia. Uh, on, uh, on the loans, you know, right now there's so many alarming things that are happening. Pakistan, which is uh, a very close ally of uh, China, just uh, canceled a $14 billion loan for a dam. And the reason is that uh, the terms were very onerous, were uh, very disadvantageous to, to Pakistan. Nepal also canceled a $4 billion dam uh, project. Myanmar, the same. And one of the issues raised uh, in all these things was the condition, number one, most of the materials will come from uh, China. By the way, uh, China is doing their Belt and Road uh, Initiative in order to provide work for their cement factories and steel factories and other uh, related factories for business. So one requirement they have is uh, they want to field a lot of uh, Chinese workers that has been a source of contention, I think primarily for uh, Myanmar, 
Myanmar objected because uh, China wanted to send in. And I'm worried that here in the Philippines, they might do the same thing. Now let's look at Indonesia. There. Japan, uh, Indonesia conducted a bidding for their uh, uh, speed uh, railway system about two years ago. And uh, it was a fight between Japan and China. And China was awarded by uh, Indonesia. And Indonesia, President Widodo, was hoping that there would be a speedy action. So what happened now? President Widodo is very disappointed because after almost two years, nothing is happening. It's all delay. And uh, he was hoping that by election year, next year, 2019, he would be able to show something clear already. But what we can show only now would be the site preparation. Pag sinabi site preparation, nililinis lang yung mga lupa, kunting uh, bulldozer here and there. So nothing happened. And uh, the reason is that uh, the Chinese side refused to cough up promised funds until Indonesia secures all etc. etc. Now on uh, back to a very important matter, yung sovereignty natin. Now here, uh, the entire ASEAN foreign ministers uh, meeting uh, they, uh, they in Singapore. Now it's a different venue, but they came out with a joint statement saying that uh, China's activity on reclaimed reef has eroded trust that is as far as ASEAN is concerned. And I think that's partly the reason why China continues to have a, the lowest rating in the Philippines. Thank you. Question. Uh, yeah, I have to uh, clarify uh, very clear distortions from Mr. Goles. No? In the uh, uh, 2016 survey uh, done by Pew Research that was released uh, uh, no, 2017, September 2017, uh, the American image in the Filipino public declined by 14% from 90 plus down to 70 plus. I, I, I have it in my paper, you know, which I did not present because I gave way to others. Uh, we will, of course, be able to show surveys, international surveys, showing the uh, number one enemy of the world is the United States of America. And you can, it's very easy to imagine what they have done in the Middle East, in Africa, and so on. And so on. The Hambatota project uh, ran into some problems. They negotiated. The, uh, the one uh, raising the issue was the former president of uh, Sri Lanka who signed the contract you know, and then started complaining. But of course, they renegotiated and there are very clear details. The uh, security will be handled by Sri Lankan authorities. China extended loans to eventually for Sri Lanka to pay off the 70% okay. equity and so on. But uh, we're, we're ready to present all the facts uh, about this, you know? Uh -huh. And if you want, you can sponsor the two of us confronting each other on this uh, data. <laughs> I'm ready anytime. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. He mentioned my name. Ito pinag-uusapan natin, Mr. Chu. Ito, you, you answer that. That's the one. Hindi yung uh, Pew Research uh, that happened two years ago. This one. We, we, I will present current uh, surveys, no, international talking, surveys. Okay. This uh, is a I'm local talking. survey. Yeah, so what's uh, wrong with the local called, survey? That's false survey, uh, false uh, Asia. No, no, all right, all right. Thank you. Uh, uh, but you I mean, will, 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 Mr. Chu. Yeah, we will false have, Asia. We will have uh, uh, a separate Congress uh, uh, session for that. Ago, I moved to delete that statement. <laughs> we will have uh, a separate uh, venue for that. Okay, more questions from our colleagues from the media? From FOCAP? Okay? All right. Well, I, I'd like to say thank you to all, all our guests. Short statements, please. Short statements. Ano mangyayari sa relasyon ng Pilipinas at China? Please sum it up in two sentences. Well, uh, I hope that uh, our uh, leadership will uh, adopt the right strategy. It's either a win-lose strategy or a win-win strategy. Pag nagkamali tayo dyan, uh, future generations will suffer. And the uh, second sentence is that... Um, uh, nagagalak ako na for the first time in history, meron tayong independent foreign policy ngayon under the Duterte administration. Thank you. Uh, yes. 
Yes. Uh, yung ano lang no. Uh, in principle, uh, for some reason, uh, the news that comes out is almost all anti-China. If they are talking about facts, but there is hardly anything coming out that is not good for the U.S. So, for instance, yung uh, pag uh, wave ng 150 million dollar or 100 plus million dollar North Rail hindi na nila basyan, no? Uh, pero para sa atin, ang kailangan ng importante kung ano maganda para sa Pilipino. There has never been a time in the world where so much uh, positive factors for the Philippines. We are close to the largest market. We are close to the largest technologies and financing that is available to us. Almost any project will make money if it's a reasonable project. So if I, let's take advantage of this situation together and put aside the politics. Thank you very much. Yes, Butch. Yeah, I think this, uh, this meet, uh, uh, forum will, should not end without mention of a very important development that had uh, start, been started maybe a couple of years back and even more. And this is the Belt and Road Initiative, the One Belt, One Road Initiative by China as a proposal for a paradigm shift on how the world will look at, at each other. Not in a geopolitical sense where in one country you have to side with one country versus another country which is moving towards conflict and war. The proposal of China has been be one belt, one road, which is a, a major global infrastructure development program for the whole world. And so far, about 82 countries have already signed up in this, in this project. You, and one of the financial institutions that they have also set up was the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment, Investment Bank. No? And so far, including our country, has signed up with this. Something like 78 countries have already signed up. Okay. It is not true that China is being looked at as a bad, bad nation or a bad, bad country. As a matter of fact, they're the only country that have come up with something that is an alternative to World War III. Thank you. Yes, Ambassador. Uh, I think that uh, we have a lot of things to win and nothing to lose if the Filipinos would just decide to minimize talking, um, do our homework, and move on. Parang sinasabi mo, manahimik na muna si Secretary Roque, gano'n ba yun? No, uh, that's part of moving on. But I think that uh, Secretary Roque should also see to it that all the things that, when, when it comes to foreign policy or relations, that we have to give importance to what really the Department of Foreign Affairs has So he must be circumspect. Yes. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, Sir Melo, um, for me, I, I think yung projects po ng China dito sa atin, their investments would continue to be shaped by how the South China Sea will be managed or sensationalized. And, um, and, and the resolutions or the management of this dispute uh, doesn't just depend on us. It's, it's, uh, no, it's, it comes both ways. We have to do our part. The Chinese would also have to do their part. And so um, we don't really have to love them, sir, actually. We just have to work with them where we can. And um, so in other words, sir, for me, it's, um, it's it, friends, will, friends with all, um, enemies to none, or sabi nga po nila. And they, or engagements with all, isolation from none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, it's my honor to be with this group, General Corpus, my uh, upperclassman and squad leader back in uh, many years ago. Butch Valdez, uh, we worked together during my post office days. Mr. Rabena, my, you're a new uh, acquaintance. John Lozada, we go back uh, so many years. Mr. George C., uh, I don't know if we've encountered each other before, but my pleasure to listen to you also. I fully agree that, uh, in fact, uh, when uh, it was announced that we were uh, uh, reconnecting with China after the Aquino administration, I welcome that because uh, <coughs> there should be that diplomatic and economic engagement. In both uh, instances, we would benefit as a country. Uh, it should not be what happened uh, during the Aquino administration when things were so quiet after the 2012 seizure of Scarborough Shoal by China. But amidst all this, we must remember that China is there. China wants to own 90% of the West mm -hmm. European Sea. If they succeed in doing that, if they succeed in finally grabbing Reed Bank, 
they will be just a neighbor just across the horizon, over the horizon. That's how close they would be. Because if they succeed in doing that, we would have only out of the 200 mile exclusive economic zone, we'd end up with only about 60 miles. And 60 miles is just over the horizon. Okay. And that will be a big, uh, imagine a military base just a few miles away from uh, Palawan. Mm -hmm. It will be a big threat. So we must be always mindful of that. Our okay. territory and our wealth. That's a big amount of wealth that will benefit uh, the present generation and the generations to come. And mm -hmm. also I'm a little worried tinitingnan na nila yung Benham Rice. So I hope uh, that uh, we would not make a mistake in our uh, uh, engagement with China because if we make a mistake, magiging ganyan yung passport natin. No? <laughs> uh, anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, binanggit kanina yung uh, Sukhoi uh, mga war armaments. No? Problema yata, wala tayong pera kaya Sukhoi na lang ang asahan natin. At yung mga missiles, mukhang tigdas lang tayo. Anyway, ang problema, saan nandun yung pera? Now, let me end our discussions this morning, which I believe is uh, very interesting. Uh, there was this guy, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who said, A single conversation across the table with a wise man is better than 10 years mere study of books. But today, we're more fortunate because we have wise men across the table. With that, we say thank you to everyone for being with us. You may ambush the resource persons you want to talk with after our program. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.